Hi, today we're going to look at filming wildlife in slow motion video. I'm still a novice at shooting video, it's a big learning curve, there's still lots of it I don't understand, but somewhere along the line I started to shoot in slow motion and I think wildlife in slow motion just looks absolutely wonderful. So the bulk of the time now I am shooting slow motion. I'm primarily using Olympus cameras for my photography today. This is the Micro Four Third system. The M1X body will give me 120 frames per second high definition video. And that looked fine. I was very happy with that, but I was always yearning for something a little bit faster. And when I looked into it, if I bought a Panasonic G9, that would give me 180 frames per second, which is roughly seven times slow. So I bought one of those. That's a relatively cheap camera. And because it's a Micro Four Third, it will fit all my Olympus lenses. The lenses are interchangeable between the manufacturers. So for video work, I'm now mostly using the G9 and mostly shooting 180 frames per second. But you do have to manually focus as soon as you go into slow motion mode. And that's a bit of a problem because the screens on the back of cameras are not really big enough and clear enough to be able to manually focus successfully. So I have bought an external monitor, it's about five inches across, sits on the hot shoe of the, the camera. That helps, but it's not the perfect solution. First of all, it makes the camera bigger and bulkier, it's another bit of kit you've got to carry about with you. And the battery that powers the monitor doesn't last all that long. So I use it sometimes, but I would prefer it if cameras autofocused all the time. The Panasonic will autofocus at 4K 60 frames per second. So sometimes I do that just slows it down a touch and sometimes that's enough but mostly it's 180 frames per second and manually focusing you also lose the sound of course that's to be expected the sound would be very weird at slow motion i now watch a lot more wildlife footage on the television than i used to because it's all part of the learning curve and it seems to me there's very little footage that is shown at normal speed most of it is slowed down and if you watch wildlife footage at normal speed it's too fast it's too jerky it doesn't look real so when you slow it down it actually starts to look how you'd expect it to look it's actually slowed down but looks looks better and more normal somehow so i'm going to start off by showing you all the settings both on the panasonic and the olympus to achieve slow motion and then i'm going to show you footage that i've taken over the last roughly 12 months i, I would say it's 12 months since i started shooting in slow motion and it's enough material to be able to show you why i enjoy wildlife in slow motion so much so we're starting off with the olympus m1x camera you bring up the menus you scroll down to the video options and then across to the right and you want specification settings second one down then across to the right and across to the right again on the top option these are your frame rates at the moment it's set to 4k at 30 frames per second we scroll all the way down we get to the high speed 120 frames per second scroll to the right and you can set it to the playback speed so 25 30 50 60 or 24 I go for 25 frames per second, that's what I'm normally producing my videos at. You OK that, and that's it. You've set it to 120 frames per second. Now the only other thing you have to set is the shutter speed, because the shutter speed should be twice that of your frame rate. So at the moment it's set to 1 25th of a second. So I can just change the dial, 2 50th of a second will be fine. And that's it on the, on the M1X. So this is the Panasonic G9. You do have to have the top dial set to movie mode. This is where you would normally be able to select aperture priority, shutter speed priority, etc. Or set it to movie mode, else the menus will be greyed out, or some of them will. You can see at the moment on the left hand side we've got the red symbol, movie symbol. Well, above that you won't be able to get to that menu unless you've got the top dial set to movie mode and it's from here we select high speed video it's to the right and the second one down currently set to off so we come down to here hit the menu button we select what speed we want which is nearly always for me 180 frames per second hit the menu button and that's it you're done you're in high speed mode you don't have to set the shutter speed with this camera it's set for you automatically 
if we come back down to the other movie symbol many of the options are now greyed out and you can't change things because you're in high speed mode so we come back to that symbol go back up to the one with the M next to it come across turn that off and then when we come back down to the normal video mode things are not greyed out anymore or not so many of them are and you can start to change settings we want page one record quality and there I can select 60 frames per second 4k which is the top option but the difference here is that will still auto focus in the uh, animal tracking mode so I use one of those two options either 180 frames per second manual focus or 60 frames per second 4k and it will auto focus onto the video clips crested tit up in scotland very difficult bird even to get a stills picture of to try and get a video clip of any length very very hard indeed but because the camera is going at seven times slow he didn't have to be there very long to get enough footage of him to be able to show I like the fact you can see wildlife doing things that you wouldn't notice with normal speed. This coot cropping the grass, turning his head sidewards to do it. And when coots fight, it's wonderful. Very, very dramatic. If coots are rare, photographers would spend a fortune renting hides out uh, to go and sit in freezing cold conditions to photograph this. But because they are common on our city ponds, they tend to get ignored. I tend to call them the poor man's black grouse. Black Red Star coming down to drink. And when I was watching this, I couldn't make up my mind. Was it nervous of all these honeybees? Or was it just a coincidence? But you can see that one bee flying towards it now. I feel that Red Star was tense about it. And he waits for that honeybee to settle down on the floor and as soon as it does, it comes forward for another drink. And you can see this sort of behaviour far more in video in slow motion than you can at normal speed. Rabbits I find normally very difficult to photograph, but this one was incredibly cute. But in slow motion, looks even cuter. The reason rabbits are normally so difficult is they don't do much. They just sit on the grass and nibble away at it, unlike hares which are often moving around. But this one was interesting, just the way he reared up on those hind legs to reach up into the leaves to start nibbling at them. And a goshawk, a nice gory shot. This is one of my favourite slow motion clips. I know it was taken on the Olympus camera, so this will be 120 frames per second. When young wood pigeons are still on the nest but well grown, the parents don't feed them very often. It can be every five, six, seven, eight hours even between visits. So here we've got some well grown chicks, been waiting a long time to be fed. And uh, the parents do feed them for a long time when they come in. It goes on for about five minutes or so as they regurgitate the pigeon milk. This is in a local cemetery where wood pigeons are particularly common. And I often go here to test out a camera and I was probably just testing out slow motion to see what it looked like. An obvious subject to look for is birds bathing in slow motion. This is a greenfinch. It's always going to look good with all that splashing water. This is a Herman's gull in Mexico. I had a lot of trouble identifying this bird. It's a juvenile and none of the bird books I had showed the images of, of a juvenile and I couldn't find it on the internet either. It took me quite a few days to work out what I was looking at.
great crested grebe not a very well marked bird a young bird and the weather wasn't very exciting either it was rather a grey day and I almost didn't press the button at all but I'm glad I did because in slow motion as it's bouncing about on these waves it still made it look interesting so slow motion can even improve bad weather conditions so here I am in the rain photographing kingfishers it helps if it's very heavy rain you don't want light drizzle but just nice the way the the raindrops are bouncing off the bird in slow motion and a northern shoveler doing what shovelers do filtering out the food from the water as it swims along I have no idea where I took this that's one of the disadvantages of video you've got nowhere to put IPTC data to record information in the file barn owl I remember doing this this is local to me very very difficult to manually focus on this and keep it in focus so I didn't get many seconds of it Osprey much easier because it's just hovering hardly moving in the air at all when it dived into the water I didn't do so well I got some very nice stills pictures of it but it was only the flight shots where it's hardly moving that I was able to do on video and then a Canada goose or gosling looking very tough and butch and a long tailed tit who's interested in this feather just trying to work out the best way to get at it needs a different approach what a smart bird slow worms for me are a bit like rabbits find them difficult to take nice pictures of they don't do much but again in slow motion when it does do something it makes it last long enough to be able to actually see it because in real time that is very very short and that's it some of my favorite slow motion clips so far thanks for watching